class. Welcome to uh, chapter four lecture. Um, next week or the next chapter actually gets skipped. So we skip chapter five to chapter six. So if you see that, that's okay. Uh, but this week uh, in chapter four, basically what the chapter four concepts, some of the main concepts I go over has a lot to do with attitudes, where they come from, um, how we develop them, and, and kind of like how they force us into action. The thought, actions, feelings, all connected together. Sometimes our behavior doesn't reflect our attitude though. Sometimes we keep our attitudes a little dormant, what we're thinking. But a lot of times it will come out somewhere or another in some kind of action. So here's some of the concepts of attitude, some of the basic ones that you'll see on your exam, like cognitive dissonance, insufficient justification, self-perception theory and over justification affect some of these when you go over these and review these you'll be like yep that makes sense been a part of that before so attitudes where do they come from what are they uh the book defines it as uh beliefs and feelings related to a person or an event so it's your beliefs and your feelings so how you feel about things what you believe about things where do those beliefs and feelings come from? Now, we've talked about those over the past couple of weeks. They come from upbringing. They come from just personal thoughts and perception. Maybe that's just how you think and perceive things. They can come from experiences. They come from all different types of, of things. And when it's related to a person or event, it could be anything, any type of person, any time of event. You see somebody who's uh, the different person, political party, uh, your thoughts that way, different ethnicity background, you think about your experiences or your thoughts, or you could be having an attitude towards that. Or it could be even being asked to clean your room, you already have the internal attitude that you didn't want to do it. So you'll see a lot of a lot of your attitudes come from different areas of your life. And, and that's where they typically come from. Um, and, and the question always is asked, and I kind of already kind of uh, preceded this, but does the inside thought predict outside action or behavior? Not always. Uh, sometimes, I don't know about you, but me, when my parents asked me, like my, my dad asked me to go outside and, you know, pull weeds and cut the grass. We really didn't have grass where I was from. We had more like weeds. Um, take the lawnmower and cut a little bit of the grass and pull all the weeds. Uh, my outward behavior was, yeah, dad, sure. But inside, I was like, angry, frustrated, like I didn't want to do it. So not always, right? Sometimes we're excited, like if dad, mom walk in and say, hey, you guys did a good job this week. Let's go get some ice cream. Your, your inside uh, attitude uh, will definitely come out. Now, when it comes to predicting behavior, it's hard to do that because we don't know what other people are thinking. We can assume. Sometimes we can. You know, like if 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 I know telling everyone today that there's a pop quiz when there's not, so don't be alarmed when I'm in a live class. But if I were to walk in and one day say, you know, here's a pop quiz, I can guess that some of you guys might grovel and, and kind of grumble, um, but not necessarily. Sometimes it's like, hey, this is part of college. Um, so it's not always gonna predict uh, the outside behavior, okay? We, we get these from personal experiences though. So um, in terms of predicting personal experiences, uh, help us help shape how we would behave or act. And sometimes when we see another person sitting across from us, we can guess how they'll act. Can we predict criminal behavior? Um, it's really hard to do that, but in a lot of ways, if you work part of the justice system like I have, work in juvenile correction. Uh, they always tell the youth, you're probably gonna be back in the intake unit by the time you get released and come back, unless you become an adult, then you'll go to prison. Um, most of the time, uh, within a couple of weeks to a month, I will see a youth walking by uh, and going towards the intake unit. And of course they're laughing and I'm laughing because we all, they promised they wouldn't come back. Or they would say, I bet you, Mr. Salcedo, that I won't come back. And I would like to say, I believe that, but it's probably going to happen that you're going to come back. You kind of can't predict that. 
in terms of other criminal behavior, it's really hard because somebody could be quiet. I, I remember working in juvenile corrections, some kids would be quiet and movable. And then when you read their profile, you'd be like, they're more dangerous than the outspoken gangster guy. And the kid I'm talking about is quiet, is not even part of a gang member. They're just quiet, sitting there thinking, they don't say much, and they're very respectful. But when you read their profile, you kind of just get, you know, amazed that this this 16, 15 year old would commit heinous crime. So it's really difficult to predict criminal behavior. I throw this in there because we are talking about evil acts um, in this week, and so you'll, as you're as you're kind of going through that, it is kind of hard to perceive evil acts. The ABC model that's in the book, it's Figure One, page 89 is a perfect representation of how things act and, and how um, it all comes together as far as your behavior. Effect, behavior, cognition. And as you see, effect is also saying is equal to feelings, cognitions is equal to thoughts, and behavior is equal to action. So when you're also actually looking at ABC, you could actually say FTA as well, if you want to use an acronym. So you, the reason why the arrows are pointing to one another is because each of these three can affect the others. In other words, like your behavior can affect the way you think and also the way you feel. Uh, the way you feel can affect the way you think and the way you behave, or your feelings can affect your thoughts to your actions. It can all be intertwined. Your thoughts can influence your feelings and your actions. I know it's one of some more confusing than I already have been already, but it's really true. And so when you look at some of the basic examples, if you see somebody from an ethnic background that you're not sure of or you feel uneasy, or that they look like, hey, these are the type of people I see on TV, uh, it can affect your thoughts to where, if, let's say they walk up and say, hey, can I bum a dollar off of you? The answer would be no. And this is an actual example someone actually told me from class that they regretted later on. So it's not in this class, but another class. So uh, that's a good example of ABC model. Cognitive dissonance is definitely a common term used. Um, it assumes, uh, cognitive dissonance theory assumes that to reduce discomfort, we justify our actions to ourselves. Very, very basic, very, very simple. Um, when you look at something, that you're doing that's not right, like it could be a sin, you justify to yourself that it's okay, it's not that bad to make yourself feel better. That's what cognitive dissonance is, all right? So like basically cognitive dissonance causes some kind of anxiety or stress. So you're stressed about something. There's some kind of event or act that you're committing or thought process that you're thinking that's causing some kind of stress. And then you have a personal view and confidence that, that's affected by it. And so therefore you're kind of thinking, um, you know, how, how do I not let it impact who I am and mess up my confidence? So some basic examples, the book uses smoking. I also say, I also use dieting and, and work ethic and smoking could be you know, you're smoking, it makes me relax. It's not that bad. A lot of people do it. It's okay, even though you know it's bad. Dieting, yeah, it's okay if I, you know, eat pizza once in a while and then go work out. I'll be okay. Uh, your work ethic, especially like, let's say you're at your job, you know, you slack off a little bit at work. You know, that's okay because I worked better yesterday than I did today. So uh, I got a lot more done. I guess it's okay if I take off a couple of hours and just do nothing. So you're 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 stressed about something, but you want to do something against what you know is right, but you want to make yourself feel better about it. Insufficient justification. It's part of cognitive dissonance. Okay, so it's basically justifying you know uh, behavior again. So you're justifying some kind of act. So there's a reward that detracts your previously held belief. You know, so if, um, if I told you that, um, you know, you'll be rewarded, you'll be rewarded to give a different answer um, on a study 
um, you know, if, if I tell you, hey, you know, um, I'll give you $5 or a gift card to your favorite place to get a smoothie, um, if you answer, give uh, a different answer than what you normally would give, then you're justifying why you would actually do it. Okay, so um, there's very easy common examples with this. So if I give you um, a dollar to tell a lie on that study, chances are, I don't know if you would, but if I give $20 to another group and say, to a couple of people say, if you, I'll give you $20 um, to tell a lie on this exam or this study, most likely we'll justify it. On a positive spin, sometimes some of us will eat food we don't like, like vegetables. You're justifying that uh, you're, um, going to eat the vegetable that you don't like, but internally you justify eating and telling yourself it's going to be happy. I mean, that's going to be healthy, sorry. So you're, you're justifying, you're basically justifying whatever act you're doing. Self-perception theory. Um, here we go. It's your personal view of yourself, okay? And this also falls under some confidence level as well. So you, you make an inference based on your self-evaluation. Sometimes we think of ourselves higher than we are. And sometimes we think about ourselves without even considering what other people think about us. So it's a self-evaluation. Uh, it's actually, you're making inferences of yourself is basically what you're doing. Um, uh, some examples that, you can, that I can come up with is, you know, I go to the gym a lot, therefore I'm an athlete. But if you ask their two closest friends, my two closest friends, they would probably laugh if they heard me say I'm an athlete because there's no way I'm an athlete. I mean, I know I'm not an athlete, <laughs> but um, my friends would actually laugh at that and say, no, I, I know definitely Kevin's not an athlete at all. And so perhaps maybe you're not. And sometimes maybe you are uh, that. Okay, and over justification effect. Um, there's an external incentive that influences a decrease in intrinsic motivation. Okay, so um, sometimes it's, it's, this is kind of a weird one. Sometimes there's an act that people already enjoy doing. And so if they're paid for doing it or if there's some kind of incentive to do it, it actually detracts them from doing that act. You know, like if, if you were doing something fun, like let's say uh, you like to play pool um, and you're going out to the pool hall, you play pool for fun, and then all of a sudden it says, hey, you know what? I'll pay you to play in the tournament. You're, you're probably not going to do it because it's something that you actually love doing, but you really don't want to do it because it's now for some... So it sounds more like a job probably than anything. Um, some of the other examples is playing piano. How many of you play piano or an instrument? You know, get paid, I like it less. You know, I don't want to get paid to do it. I just like enjoying doing it. I know it sounds kind of silly because if you're really good at something like playing the piano, you probably want to get paid. Like if you, someone says, can you play at my wedding? Sure, you know, I'll make a quick extra 500 to $1,000. But in a lot of ways, you know, if somebody's actually paid to do it, you know, it could demotivate them. So that's pretty much it on this chapter four lecture. I hope I clarified some of this stuff up. If you have any questions, please let me know.